Very cool. Really, really neat. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my art channel. Thank you for stopping by. I've got a very fun project today. For me, I'm going to start it today and then I'll have to finish up some more in a few weeks, but you are lucky and you get to watch the whole thing in one video. I got this for Christmas. Some drawing gum liquid latex masking fluid. So I was inspired in this by the lovely Olga Sobi. She uses this to create some beautiful um, like second layers on top of some of her pores. So I'm very excited to try this. But it's weird making a pour that you're like intentionally going to use this for because it seems like most of the time you would do a pour and then you'd go, hmm, I want to add some things to it later. And so then you'd use it. But to actually design a painting that you can only accomplish while using this is actually kind of tricky. But I think I figured it out. So let's make a painting. Really quick, before we go back and start painting, I need to talk just a little bit about my inspiration and my sponsor for today's video. My sponsor today is Ana Luisa Jewelry, and I've collaborated with them a couple of times in the past. Ana Luisa makes high quality jewelry at affordable prices out of sustainable materials. They are dedicated to caring for the planet with carbon neutral practices and nearly plastic free packaging. Just look how cute these little snap pouches are. Aren't those adorable? They're great for storing your jewelry and traveling with it. So the inspiration for today, Ana Luisa has just launched a series of personality pendants. So this is one that I'm wearing right now. They are based more or less on the elements. So there's water, air, earth, fire, spirit, and light. They have these really cute hand-designed engravings on them. They're made of brass that's plated in 14 karat gold. So they've got this really nice solid feel to them while also being small enough to pair with any outfit. I was drawn, of course, to the water pendant. You all know how much I love the ocean. But then I really love birds, so the swallow on the air pendant was also very tempting. But in the end, I couldn't resist the earth pendant with its cute little design of a leaf, a flower, and a mushroom. I have a link and a coupon code down in the video description, which will give you 20% off your purchase if you feel like you need one of these for yourself. So you can check that out when the video is done, but for right now, let's get back to the studio. So the painting that I am working on, the design I have in my head, is of this vine climbing up a tree. So it's going to be kind of a close-up view of this green vine. So I have a 12 by 24 inch canvas. I'm going to be doing a hair dryer blowout of the vine, and then I'm going to let it dry. And then I will mask off the entire vine with the drawing gum. And uh, then I will do some kind of a swipe over top of it so that all of that negative space becomes tree bark. So I'm very excited. I, I really don't know how it's going to turn out, but I'm very hopeful. So I have five lovely green colors. And if you want to know exactly what brands and colors, you can look in the video description box because I don't remember all of their names, so I'm not going to say them right now. These are mixed with water, so they are tube paints that have been mixed with water until they are nice and thin, a Dutch pour consistency. But yeah, there's a very light sort of a key lime pie green, there's a nice bright Kelly green sort of a color, and then I have an olive green, and this beautiful dark metallic green, which my daughter Kate gave me for Christmas. And then this very dark sort of hunter's green. And I'm gonna be doing it on a white background for today. So I have a nice big cup of white, which should be plenty. All right, let's put down the base coat. I don't know exactly how much I need so I'm holding some in reserve. That is a lump. Get that out of there. 
All right, let's blow this out to cover. Well, I just made a mess of my tabletop. White paint is everywhere. It was a little bit thicker than I was expecting, actually, and so I needed to use the high setting to blow it around, and so, pff, splat. Uh, let me cover the sides. Let me torch it to pop these air bubbles. And I will even torch the sides. So for these five colors, I want to start with at least the olive and the sort of bright green. I want those to go everywhere. The other ones may sort of become accent colors. I'm not totally sure. So let me start with the olive and make sort of... Okay, I think I like that. And then I want to have an offshoot here. And an offshoot here. That might be enough. I was thinking I wanted one up here, but I don't know that I do. All right, let's add some of the bright green to this. And I do think I want metallic green throughout. Oh dear. Whoops. <laughs> totally splattered everywhere. Scoop that up. That'll get blown off. I think I like those colors as is. And now I'd love for there to be pockets of brighter, uh, like the, the light green I think is gonna be more on the offshoots and maybe a bit up here. And the dark is going to be more along the main stem. Maybe a little bit down here too. <sighs> Dripping everywhere today. Not that it really matters because I'm going to be painting over this, but you know, it's better when it just looks good all the way throughout. Okay, I'm liking the look of this. Let's go ahead and blow it out. And I'm going to try it on low. I don't want to have to do it on high unless I have to.
Okay, this is looking really cool. Certain areas are not blowing out as much as others. I don't know if that's because my base coat is too thin or I didn't have enough paint or what. So I'm gonna try to tweak a few areas. I think this branch is missing having some dark green in here. So I am gonna add a little bit of dark green. And a little bit more of the metallic. And the bright green, I think. Okay, let's see how that blows out. And I need a little bit more up here. Same, I think a little bit of the dark green. Some of the light green. And some of that metallic. Okay, overall, I think this is really cool. There's a lot of beautiful effects happening in here. It's just a little bit messy, so I'm gonna try to do a bit of tweaking on the shaping to try to get, you know, there's some spiky areas that I don't like, so. I do feel like we need some lines kind of connecting everything, so I am gonna try the finger swipe and just see what I can do with that. Okay, this doesn't look exactly the way that I was anticipating, but it's pretty close. I think I'm good for it right now. I think it'll work for the vision that I have, so let me take you in for a close-up. All right, so let's take a look here. So first of all, my metallic green made a whole bunch of cells and lacing, but they kind of went crazy. I don't know if it was too thin. Look what it did up there. That's so wild. I don't think I'm going to keep those, but so we do have some pockets that are just really pretty. A few other pockets that are a little bit messy, but it's a cool blend of colors and it is a very organic vine like shape. So I will see you back here when this is dry, not just dry, but cured. And then I will show you the next step. All right, let's go to that next. Okay, so here I've got the dried painting. It's sat for two or three weeks to let the paint cure. Um, as you can see, I've done some touch-ups to cover up some of those messy areas and just add some more details, some more kind of swooping and make it look really whimsical. And I may do even more touch-ups after the next layer goes on, but first it's time to mask off this vine so that I can paint the swipe over it. 
So I'm going to start by taping off the areas, the main areas, and then around the edges that are hard to get, I'm going to use the drawing gum. You want to make sure there's enough overlap uh, between your layers of tape so that no paint will flow underneath. All right, tape is on, it's time for the drawing gum. Now this is liquid latex, so obviously if you have a latex allergy, this is probably not the product for you to be using. Or if you do, make sure you're properly protected with gloves and a respirator and all of that. I do not have a latex allergy, so let's go. So I'm trying to put it on in a thick enough layer that it will be a nice solid coating. Masking fluid is designed more for watercolors and thin applications. And since I'm going to be adding a layer of paint and letting it dry before I peel this up, I just want to make sure that it is a nice thick layer. All right, so I have the layer of drawing gum all the way out to the edges, and you can see it is starting to dry, and it turns transparent as it dries. I really hope that this layer is thick enough that when I peel it up, it'll it'll take the paint with it and not, you know, I hope the layer of paint is not going to be more strong and lasting than this layer of drawing gum. So hopefully that works fine. We will see. I'm going to let this dry for... I don't know, 15, 30 minutes, whatever, whatever it needs to be totally dry. And then I'll be right back to paint the tree bark. So the drawing gum is dry. It's all, it's this weird rubbery feeling layer on the outside. So that's dry. Sides are taped well. I've got my tree bark colors. So this one is sort of a neutral tan color. This was just a custom blend of white and brown and a little bit of gray. And then this is Nutmeg from Apple Barrel. And these are mixed medium thin. And I realize my cups, like, it's too hard for you to see from that, from that view. And it's too hard to see from straight above. But medium thin flows very, very well off of the stick. Then this is gray, this is just a black and white mix, because I didn't want the trunk to be super like chocolate brown. I wanted a bit of neutral color in there. And then this is a metallic, this is a blend of like copper and bronze that I had sitting left over in a squeeze bottle and I don't know exactly what what colors went into it and what brands, but it's a sort of a metallic bronze-ish. And then I have some burnt umber. Also, this was a leftover one. Not exactly sure what brand. And I added a bit of black. And there's a lump, so let me get that out of there. Okay. But that'll be my nice dark brown. 
And then I have a little bit of the olive green that I used in the vine itself, just because I want it to feel like there's, I don't know, a bit of moss, lichen, algae on, on the bark. So I'm going to be putting the colors into a split cup. I want all the colors to be in there, but for it to be a lot more blended. So I'm gonna put it down and this will hopefully create much thinner layers. And then I will be swiping with my Amsterdam Titanium White and Australian Floetrol. It's somewhere between three to one and four to one Floetrol to paint. And that's gonna hopefully create that nice bark look. And from the beginning, I've been planning on swiping vertically, but now I think I'm gonna swipe this direction because I think the, the difference that I'll get in cell size and shape might give the illusion of roundness. You know, larger cells in the middle, smaller on the sides. So I like that idea. Plus it gives more opportunity to swipe off and like cover over the sides, which I think will be really helpful. Okay, let's get to it. I'm gonna be swiping with this plastic laminator sheet and I have some palette knives here. So I'll be doing a mix of swipes and I really hope this works. I, I have no idea, but let's make this, let's layer up this cup. So let's pick this up. I'm gonna start here and just make some lines back and forth and then sort of angle them this way so that I'll be swiping that direction. tilt a little bit to cover Need a little bit more up here cool it's a it's a neat color blend I like it okay now I'm gonna do this section starting here and going out that way All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the olive green, just some little speckles and splatters. Now it's time to start swiping. This is the, this is the exciting part. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with some of these uh, sections that go in farther. So I'm gonna take my palette knife here and put just a thin layer of this cell activator on it. Cell activator meaning not silicone oil. This is not an oil-based thing. It creates this beautiful lacing, usually used in the bloom technique. But I'm gonna use it here even though these are more normal thin paints mixed with Floetrol. All right, so I'm gonna swipe this way and stop about here so that I can continue with a larger thing. All right, here we go, let's swipe. Very 
Very cool. I love watching the lacing pop up. Really, really neat. I'm going to turn this. Should have done that before. Because for this next section, I want to be swiping with my plastic sheet. I can almost get the whole thing, but not quite the whole thing. I actually have to do it in two parts anyway, because this one goes up farther and this one does not. So for this, I'm going to... Put the cell activator right along the very edge of the, sh of the sheet. So it's very much like swiping with a palette knife, except it's a plastic sheet. Much bigger, more flexible, more like a traditional swipe instead of a palette knife swipe. Okay. And yes, I have this on more, more area than I need it to be. That'll be all right. All right. Touch it down in the paint and gently pull. Oh, that's pretty. All right, let's do that again, and we'll go here now. So you can see the white of the cell activator is definitely sinking down into the paint because this is a thin paint, but that's what I want. All I'm looking to do is create sort of the lacing and the cells. We don't have to have white. Okay, that didn't work very well right here. I'm going to swipe over that section again. I think for this section, I'm going to try, I don't know, I might do sort of a diagonal swipe, like that. I'll try it, see if it works. <laughs> well, my lines are definitely moving diagonally, which is not necessarily what I should have done. But it's a beautiful swipe. Cells are nice, so I'm not going to change it. Time to flip the canvas around and do the other side. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. Definitely the lines are more horizontal than I had intended. Um, hopefully when I pull everything up, it, it'll, look, it'll still look like tree bark the way I had wanted it to. So I'm going to just make the sides a little bit, I may dab on a little bit more of that sort of grayish brown color just to make sure that the whole thing looks uniform. But then I'm gonna let this dry and we will be back when it's time to pull up the tape. All right, guys, the paint layer is all dry, so now it's time to pull up the tape and the drawing gum areas and see how it goes. I was telling my husband, Josh, I could see it going one of three ways. Either I pull it up and it works perfectly and everything's great, or the tape and the drawing gum pulls up perfectly, but the swipe is the wrong direction and I go, next time I'll change the direction, or, the drawing gum will not pull up and it'll be a flop. So 
<laughs> I have a one in three chance of this working. Let's go ahead and start and see how it goes. Okay, so this is really interesting. The drawing gum is coming up as this stretchy layer and the paint is more rigid on the top so the drawing gum is pulling away from it so it's like peeling peeling up a section of paint I have a razor blade here let me just sort of trim along where that has lifted you see this flap that's being pulled up so that's It's not what I was expecting, but it's also like not the worst case scenario because if it lifts up, I can, I can trim it off. I'm not sure if that's exactly how it was supposed to look, but I've got, I have an edge. So, yeah, let's keep going. Very interesting. Okay, so this is working about as well as I could hope for. It's, it's a really interesting process because the drawing gum is very rubbery, so it pulls up like elastic. And as it pulls up, it lifts the area of paint that was on top of it, like folding it up. And then with an X-Acto knife or a razor blade, I like a razor blade because you can just slide it flat across the surface and you can just trim off that layer that's opening up. Um, I'm going to take my overhead camera and pull it down a little bit closer so that you can see more a close-up of, of this effect as I continue working my way across the canvas. Okay, so there's some little edges that I'm going to need to clean up. There's some parts that I may need to touch up with a brush uh, later, but overall, this went very, very well. So let me give you a close up and show you how the whole thing looks all together. Okay, here we go. So this turned out about as well as I could have hoped for. Isn't that cool? It's such a nice organic shape with the two very different textures. So there are some areas here where I pulled up that paint where it's a little bit rough and I will just have to come in and neaten some of those either by trimming that top paint layer or adding some more paint just to make it look a little bit neater. But overall, really cool. A nice flowing vine 
on a beautifully textured tree trunk background. I think if I was doing this exact same thing again, I probably would swipe the bark vertically, but I don't think it looks bad this way. I think it's pretty cool. So thank you so much for joining me for this painting video. Boy, it was an adventure, wasn't it? I hope it inspired you to try something new. Remember to go check out the Ana Luisa sale if that sounds interesting to you. They have some beautiful jewelry and I really love these personality pendants. I will see you back on my channel very soon for another video, so see you then. Bye!